If you've been experiencing slow or stalled weight loss despite working really hard, but I'm here to tell you that you can speed up your metabolism to see more progress. Not by doing quick fixes or anything like that, but by implementing little strategic habits that you can do very easily. First, you have to know what doesn't work and why. That's why I'm going to share with you what kills your metabolism first and what you really should not do. What usually happens is that people think that weight loss just equals eating less. That happened with me as well. I thought that I should just eat less and then I'll lose weight very easily and I'll be where I wanted to be. Also, calorie tracking apps like MyFitnessPal usually recommend about 1200 calories, which, spoiler alert, is not enough to sustain your body. It's what a toddler is supposed to eat and not a grown adult. And it really is not sustainable. Eventually, you will start losing weight if you restrict your calories and start eating a lot less. You will lose weight the first week, the second week, maybe even the third week, but then your weight loss will just slow down and start stalling a bit. That's when people usually start exercising even more than they have been before and eating less so that they can like balance out the skills again. And at some point you will get so low with your calories that you may only be eating a thousand calories per day and exercising non-stop all the time, which will decrease your quality of life even more at that point. And you will not really have a life anymore if you're not eating anything and exercising all day. You are going to be short-tempered, irritated, stressed out, and you also might not be able to sleep very well at night. Sometimes you will even start missing out on social events because of your obsession and not wanting to eat too much and enjoy too much because you know you would overeat at that occasion. What happened with me was that I realized that life is so much more than just trying to lose weight and trying all the quick fixes there are to just escape the body that I just wasn't comfortable in because I was actually feeling very uncomfortable in my body and that was the reason that I wanted to change. I just wanted to get out of that uncomfortable feeling while I had that body that I was not happy with. I had to realize that I had to be okay with the body that I had in that exact moment and I'm saying be okay and not love because going from completely hating your body to loving it unconditionally is very hard so I feel like the first step is going to neutral first and then moving forward to loving your body at one point but it's gonna be a long journey it's not gonna be just a few days and then you love your body or even just a few weeks it's gonna be months and years of you trying and being on this journey but it's totally worth it i'm still on this journey myself and it's not easy of course but i'm getting there <laughs> another thing that i do want to mention here is that you can love your body or be neutral towards your body and still want to change your health and your body shape or how you look but it should not come from a place of hating your body and totally wanting to escape the body that you're in but rather from a place of love and just acceptance towards your body and trying to improve your health because it really is not going to stick if you you can't really hate yourself into a body that you love because otherwise you you will never be happy with the body that you will have if you can't even accept the one that you have right now. In addition to this, I realized that lifelong health is so much more important to me than just quick fix and losing weight just in a little amount of time. I really wanted to have lifelong health. I did not want to gain weight and lose weight again every few years. I realized that I do not have to have everything right now. I do not have to lose weight immediately. I do have time. I don't have to lose like 20 kilos in three months. I have time to do that because it's going to be much more sustainable. It's going to be much healthier for my body. It's going to be much more likely for me to 
stay there and keep that weight off if I do it slowly and sustainably and change my habits in the process of that instead of doing quick fixes that I know I'm not going to be able to sustain over the long run because the important thing is that you build habits small habits that you know you can keep up with every single day because that's what changes your whole routine and how you show up for yourself and how you can actually make a change that stays over several years and for your whole life. Quick fixes often give the impression that there's an end point to your journey and if you just push through the hard part you will get there and you will have made it, you'll have lost the weight and everything but that's actually not true for long-term health. Long-term health is gonna go on for the rest of your life. If you do a quick fix, you don't stop there. Your journey does not stop there. You still have so much life in front of you and you can't just push through the hard part and then just completely burn out and not want to do it anymore because you're not gonna be able to keep the weight off if you did not like what you did while losing weight because you have to change your habits rather than just doing quick fixes it's not going to stick otherwise like i said lifelong health goes on for the rest of your life so you have to figure out things that you think that you can actually do for the rest of your life for a very long time without getting bored of them because that's how you're going to stick to it if you love it you're not going to stop because you like doing it. It's actually really a lifestyle choice. If you find exercise that you enjoy, like if you enjoy walking but you hate running, don't go running, go on a walk. Maybe do it a bit longer instead of running for 20 minutes, go on a 45 minute walk or something like that. Because if you love it, you are going to do it it's going to be much more likely that you go on a walk than if you go on a run if you hate running but love walking so you just have to find the things that you love and then you're going to be doing them regularly and you're going to be happier with your life you're going to be able to sustain your weight loss and it's not even going to feel like hard work really because you're going to start liking what you do instead of doing quick fixes that you think you have to push through the things that you hate. There are even other downsides to really low calorie crash diets. For example, one very big thing is metabolic adaptation, which means that our bodies are adaptation machines. They're incredibly sensitive to change. Your body can literally freak out and think you're in starvation mode if you don't eat enough food for a period of time. Why? Because of thousands of years of evolution. Our ancestors may have gone through long indefinite periods where there was little to no food available and the body had to adapt to that so that they would be able to survive. For that reason our bodies developed a safety mechanism basically which is that it stores fat when it's been underfed for too long thinking that you might be in a famine period yourself and your body does not know when you will have access to food again it does not know that you can just eat whenever you want you could just go to the kitchen and grab a snack if you're hungry your body doesn't know that it thinks that you're actually starving yourself and you don't have a choice it just knows that you've not been eating enough in that period of time so it does everything in its power to optimize for storing fat slowing down your metabolic rate to burn fewer calories overall which we really do not want when we're losing weight because this means if you used to lose weight while eating 1200 calories but now you can't lose weight with that amount of calories anymore it's because your body has adapted to only burning 1200 calories and if you keep lowering your calories even more the body even more convinced that it's in a famine continues decreasing your metabolism to match it this also explains why you're so tired and irritable all the time because you literally do not have any energy to do anything else but your basic human functions your body will literally not let you use any of your energy for other things because it just does not get enough calories 
and it thinks that you are starving. So it thinks that it's more important to keep you alive than for you to have energy to do any other things. At a conservative calorie deficit of like 10 to 20%, a typical person's metabolism may adapt after about three to four months of weight loss. At the more extreme end, you may plateau after a few weeks already. Quick fixes don't work because they actually only work for a small period of time. But after a while, it just does not show any benefits anymore because first of all, your metabolism has adapted. Second of all, you might be hating what you're doing in that moment because you think you should just push through it. And the third thing is that you just won't even be able to stay at that weight because you did not implement any things that you know you'll be able to sustain in the long term. What I did instead of quick fixes was to reverse diet my way back up to maintenance after 12 weeks of being in a deficit, which meant gradually increasing my calories over time. At first it was really scary when I thought I'd see my weight shoot up and just destroy all the weight that I've lost and I would have definitely bailed on that in the past and not tried reverse dieting if it meant gaining weight back or potentially gaining weight back that I had lost. But I actually learned that this regain was only temporary water gain and I decided to trust the process. This is also where I learned to definitely not weigh myself every single day because there are so many fluctuations happening in your body that are made up of fat, muscle, water and glycogen and they can just change every moment. So I really would not recommend to compare two points of your weight if they are less than a week apart or even longer if you can go longer without weighing yourself but at least one week i would recommend once i reset my metabolism it's time to go back into a deficit and not a crash diet like i usually would have done but a moderate 10 to 20 percent deficit but remember that even with a moderate deficit your metabolism will slowly adapt over time. So from my experience, you can reverse diet every 12 weeks more or less or until you see an actual weight loss plateau. Now, if you think that you're doing basically everything you can think of and you're still not making as much progress as you would like to, ask yourself how good do you actually sleep? Everybody always says that sleep is so important, but nobody really takes it seriously, I feel like. It actually has a lot of benefits for weight loss as well, because it has a lot to do with your hormones ghrelin and leptin, which are your hunger and satiety hormones. This means that if you're not sleeping enough, this will actually make you hungrier and less satisfied when you eat something the next day. So you will basically have more cravings if you did not sleep well. A good way to start improving your sleep is to actually have a consistent wake up time rather than starting with a consistent going to bed time. Your body will adapt to that even if it might be hard in the beginning but you will start getting tired earlier in the evening and you'll be able to adapt to this new sleep schedule. If you really struggle with insomnia, I would recommend going to see a professional, of course. And if you just really struggle with sleep in general, do not try this during a busy month because you're gonna be so tired for the first few weeks. I don't think you will be able to function that well if you tell yourself that you're gonna wake up at the same time every day and you still go to sleep at like three o'clock at night and don't sleep at all but your body will eventually adapt to that i would just recommend do not do it when you're really busy and you have important things coming up your body is also so stressed that it hangs on to fat a lot more than if you would have gotten proper sleep researchers actually had a group of participants cut down on sleep for just 14 days and found that the amount of fat that they lost was reduced by half, almost 55%. Even though the calorie deficit and everything else stayed the same and they just 
change their sleep schedule. My next tip would be to increase your NEAT. NEAT means non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which basically are just small unconscious movements that you do throughout the day, like walking around, doing chores and like twitching, moving your leg, things like that. This is a lot different than formal exercise because unless you're an athlete, your calories burned per day have very little to do with your exercise routine. In fact, formal exercise actually only makes up about 5% of your total daily energy expenditure, which is your TDE, while the NEAT makes up 15%. The rest are mostly out of our control things like calories burned at rest or calories burned supporting biological functions like digesting food. Something that I do want to add here though is that protein does have a high thermic effect which means that the amount of calories it takes to digest protein is a lot higher than in any other food group. That is one of the reasons why protein is actually important for weight loss as well. So it makes a lot of sense that the NEAT is about three times more effective than formal exercise because even if you exercise daily for an hour, what about all those other 15 hours that you're awake? One hour of exercising does not make up 15 hours of sitting around. This is something that I actually experienced firsthand when I stopped dancing professionally. I was used to burning all my calories with dancing, like formal exercise at that point, and my meat was not as high when I was dancing professionally. When I stopped, my habits had not adjusted to that yet, and I gained weight. It's my lifestyle of having a low meat stayed the same when I stopped exercising for most part of the day. I was basically used to dancing all day, which usually people do not do, but in my case I was used to that and then I came home and I did not do anything. When I stopped, I did not have those routines in place that would increase my meat since I never had a problem with that when I was dancing but now I've implemented all of these things so that I don't have to do formal exercise and exercise like four hours, five hours in a whole day like I did when I danced professionally but I can still burn a lot of calories from doing daily things instead of training and exercising all the time. The thing that is really easy to implement is actually walking. Even if it's just 15 minutes a few times a day or just 30 minutes twice a day, something like that, it's gonna change a lot for you and it's not gonna feel like formal exercise, it's not gonna feel hard if I'm being completely honest. You can also just go on a walk with your friend, grab a coffee and walk through the city or something like that and that's already going to make such a big change for you. So I just wanted to add that there, that it really does not have to be hard for it to be exercise. I mean, of course you should go to the gym and you should exercise for a while, but just implement those daily habits as well that just get you up and moving for a bit without it really feeling like exercise. The last thing that I wanted to add is that you should remember you really can do it. It might be hard in the beginning to stick to it, but I know you can do it. I can do it, you can do it, we can all do it. We can be on this journey together and I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that I see you in my next video. Bye!